The vision is basically, as I said, that we need to restore Ganga to its original form. That's the vision. Now, original form means what form? Okay, okay. You have to talk about some reference condition. Isn't it? Now there is no this thing. Some people are talking about 1850, some people are talking 1900 or whatever, right? But the vision is an ultimately because once you have declared this as a national river, we want to get back to its pristine condition, right? Whether that will happen in 30 years, 40 years, 50 years or 100 years, but this is what we want to have, right? And for that, whatever that is required. Now certain things may not be reversible. Isn't it? Like some big dam, Terry Dam has already been built up. Now if you say I want to go back to 1850, I have to dismantle that. That's a very difficult proposition. You know, stopping a project which was halfway itself has taken so much. Isn't it? Hmm. Okay, so dismantling a project which is already constructed, so talking about that pristine condition is very, very difficult. But vision is that. At least we stop further intervention. Okay? And uh, make sure that we have the Aviral Dhara and the Nirmala. There is a little this thing on the Aviral Dhara also, but uh, I think Aviral Dhara is a pattern. And what he is saying is Naisargic flow hona chahiye. We are trying to go mimic that, isn't it? And that is what we want to achieve, Naisargic flow. That's the uh, vision that we have. At the same time, we have to make sure that whatever excess water that is available in the basin, we use it for developmental purposes. And, and excess water, what is that excess water? In the monsoon period, for a very small time, a large amount of water is available. And that just flows down and it causes downstream floods and other. So all that excess water, we must store it somewhere. Now where do we store it? These are the issues we need to address, whether we make dams, whether we make canal network, isn't it? So it flows to canals, used for irrigation, it goes into groundwater recharge. So storage does not mean in your groundwater also, and then you keep on using groundwater, right? So every year this is the uh, recharge and that much water you can take. This is what they are talking about, conjunctive use of water, surface water plus groundwater together. See, EQP, uh, we, we, uh, one thing that we are committed to is that we will suggest a plan to achieve uh, what we call it in short, um, uh, disconnect river and sewer. <laughs> okay? So, sewer ultimately should not flow to the river directly, right? So, our main vision, this is what we are calling, we are not relying on assimilative capacity of the river. Though the river has certain assimilative capacity, we do not want to add it to the sea, right? And there are different uh, aspects to it. Why we are saying this is, if you send it to the river, river is not going to talk. And moment you allow that into the river, most of the people will not operate those treatment plants. And there will be bypasses, there will be excuses. So this is building automatically, you know, monitoring mechanism into it. If I'm saying I'm recycling, if the treated water is coming to my house, my garden, my industry, there is automatically monitoring. Because if it comes into my trap, it is bad, I will shout. And I will know whether the treatment plant is working. If it does not come, then also I know it is not working. If it has come in a bad condition, then also it is not working. So this is the angle at which we are looking. It will be automatic enforcing, right? Like somebody said, it is the enforcement that is a problem here. So again, if you go back to the same, and People will keep making these treatment plants and they, they know that there is no accountability. People are saying okay, it's very difficult proposition, but I said at least let's start thinking on that. And then have an action plan is, okay, first I will do only this much and I will go let untreated wastewater go. First let's show that we can collect it properly. All wastewater I can collect it. When you show that capability to collect it, don't only I will sanction your treatment. When you collect it, then I'll say, okay, do preliminary treatment. I will sanction. When you demonstrate that, yes, you can work preliminary treatment, then I'll say, okay, I'll sanction secondary treatment. When you are in a position to demonstrate that, yes, you can do it in a sustained basin secondary, then I will sanction your tertiary. This is the way we want to phase out the expenditure. That is, why. It will take this thing. But today, if they say, in, in, uh, everything is done, recycling level is not going to be physical. It requires such. Then different ministries have to work together yeah. on this. Isn't it? Because collection and this thing is typically Ministry of Urban Development has to come in. 
Okay, we are also thinking because local body is ultimately how to own this. But local body simply do not care for this. Right? So we have to wear thinking whether we should have a different policy altogether. That is, let there be a Ganga river, sewage, uh, river, uh, you know, uh, sewerage board or whatever. So all the treatment plants along the Ganga is taken care of by the authority. Like we have National Highway Authority. Right? So we do not give that responsibility because we are look, working for Ganga. So that Ganga part is taken care of by that. Okay. So these are some of the aspects that. Then we have issues of uh, much of the pollution comes from dispersed sources, you know. Your solid waste dumping, this and that. So we need to talk about catchment protection. Okay, then whatever flows over the surface is of good quality. So obviously first thing we need to avoid solid waste dumping along the rivers. Right? Then even in between also, because ultimately when the rain comes, the leachate flows, it joins the drain, that drain meets the Ganga. Okay? So basically it is the waste that goes in. So that also we need to. So that way, but then directly solid waste cannot come into NGRV because again the responsibility of local body. So we need to do that, but who will do it? That policy people have to, you know? That is it. What we are saying is, we, we need to first, uh, the governing bodies themselves have to be strengthened in terms of their willingness to start work. Exactly. Okay, it is, it is not just giving training to people, telling how the sewage is, what the sewage is, how to, that's not really it. Their mindset has to change that, yes, it is good for them, right? See, unless until anybody... Is motivated is, enough, no, they mot would... No, motivation comes only when you gain something. Incentive. Right? Incentive has to be there. Now, today that is the problem. The local bodies have no incentive whatsoever for doing sewage treatment. Because Ganga does not give them votes. Isn't it? Right? So, they will be interested in doing something only if it affects their voters. Right? So, this is the point that we, we need to make policies in such a way. Because some outside World Bank funding this and then we organize one day training, two day, that's not capacity building. So, we have to make sure that whosoever is doing, will he be interested enough? And the only interest is he must be gaining something. Gaining something, either he gets votes or he gets money. If that is not assured, it's not going to. So, capacity building has to start from that.